luxury. A word with magnetism. A word that opens the door to worlds only dreamed of, where the essence is grace, luxury, creativity, opulence, and style. But what is luxury exactly? Luxury is sumptuous living. It's an indulgence rather than a necessity. Now something luxurious is rich and superior in quality. A quality that belongs either to an object or a lifestyle and is usually very costly. But that does not get to the core of true luxury. Just because something costs a lot does not mean that it has value. Authentic luxury adds value to our lives and has at its core exclusivity, craftsmanship, privacy, space and the dimension of time. The art of luxury in our times is the rediscovery of its true essence in an age that has vulgarized the concept, avoiding the obvious, the banal, the commercialized and the overexposed is essential. Luxury must be redefined if it is to have any meaning in our lives at all beyond cliché. There's a magical place I know of that defies space and time. It's in the heart of one of my favorite regions on earth, Tuscany, Toscana. Itself a place of magic and history and the most wonderfully rich tradition. Our journey will take us to cities and villages that live in the imagination and yet are real. To people who devote their lives to exquisite craftsmanship. And finally, to a place in the heart where time and space stand still and afford us the greatest luxury of all, happiness. Come with me. My sleep girl, hey Heidi, please believe this boy has just found someone he would never leave. So passion is my fashion. My heart has taken flight now that you're in my life. The colors are so bright. Who cares what Calvin Klein says? Or if Chanel is right, just come and share my passion. journey begins in timeless Florence, the capital of the tradition-rich region of Tuscany, and quite simply one of the most breathtaking and glorious cities on earth, the birthplace of European Renaissance culture, home to some of the world's most exquisite art, monuments and churches, like the beautiful Duomo. The art created in the city is priceless and absolutely essential to the world's cultural heritage. Starting in the early Middle Ages, Florentine money in the form of the gold florin financed the development of industry all over Europe, from Britain to Bruges, from Lyon to Hungary. Florence was also the home of the Medicis, one of history's most important noble families. 
a family full of popes and queens and bankers and thieves, a family with as rich and varied a tradition as Florence itself. A brief visit to the city is the perfect start to our Tuscan adventure. My first place to visit before I do anything in Florence is the Profumeria di Santa Maria Novella. which is quite simply the world's most beautiful pharmacy. Entering the Profumeria is like walking into a fantastical vision of Italy. Frescoed ceilings, bronzed angels, a violin concerto as the soundtrack, and rows of soaps and elixirs and perfumes placed perfectly in glass cases. The majority of the herbs used in its products are grown locally on the hills around Florence and the original recipes of the balms, lotions, essences, powders and soaps are still followed. And the secret formulas have been kept concealed and confidential through the centuries. Signorina Eleonora, buongiorno. Buongiorno, signor Kevin. Come va? Bene, tutto, tutto bene. posto? Sì, benissimo. Eh. By the way, many of the products from here have become historically famous. The Acqua di Regina was created for Caterina de' Medici when she became Queen of France. And the perfume created by Giovanni Paolo Feminis was named Acqua di Colonia in honor of the city he was about to move to. You may know it as Eau de Cologne. Nowadays, many men's perfumes bear this moniker. Grazie, signorina Eleonora. A dopo. This famous liqueur is named Alchemes was immensely popular in the 19th century. It's infused with sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, and cloves. And its conspicuous red color was obtained by adding kermes, a small parasitic insect from which it derives its name. Now my personal favorites are the face and body creams. They're exquisite beyond compare. It's like being caressed with the milk of the gods. Officina Profuma is not just a pharmacy, it's an oasis of tranquility in this busy city. Surrounded by cypress and olive trees, this country house on the banks of the Arno is entrancing. I just love it here. Frescoes and stone, wood and terracotta, coffered ceilings, columns, and magnificent stairways. The antique artwork and the tapestries are all crafted by Florentine artisans in time-honored fashion. So it's little wonder that such famous guests as Winston Churchill, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, Roberto Benigni, George Michael, and of course, Madonna. They've all been guests here. The secret jewel in the crown of the Villa La Massa is this enchanting private chapel. It was built in the Renaissance 
but it was restored after the Great War by the Englishman John Goldsmith Proctor to commemorate the eternal peace between the Italian and the English people. And by the way, David Bowie and Iman were married here. Well, here I am in my favorite suite in the Villa La Massa. And you can see why. The Arno. The Rufina Hills. Now I really feel at home. Hey, drink up all you people. The bar here is cozy and intimate. The red walls, the relief. The perfect place for a midday cocktail. Ecco, signor Kevin. Grazie, Silvano. Prego, signor Kevin. Perfetto come sempre. This unique view is one of the great pleasures of lunching at Il Verrocchio. Chef Andrea Quagliarella offers the finest Tuscan regional cuisine, la cucina toscana. Particolare ecco. della nostra regione, ah, eh, olio, di Villa Massa, olio extravergine d'oliva. Da, dalla massa, no? Dalla massa, sì. Dalla massa, è, è il sapore è diverso, non sì. c'è niente da. Sì. Uh, non è con conservanti, con niente, sì. è naturale. Homegrown vegetables direct from the gardens and the finest self-produced olive oil distilled from the olive grove surrounding the property. The villa is graced with 22 acres of gardens with paths that lead down here to the river. Now from here, you have a spectacular view of the beautiful hills. These gardens are part of the prestigious I Grandi Giardini Italiani, which translates to Great Italian Gardens. This is an accreditation awarded only to the most important Renaissance villas and gardens. What happened to the frown? You know, I love flowers. And this garden is just full of them. Grinning in the mirror. Is it really me? I'd like to run through Central Park. Carve your initial on the bar. It's such a pleasure to stroll here after a delicious lunch, breathing the fresh air and planning the next foray into Florence. When visiting Florence, I always treat myself to a walk through the city center. It's just like meeting an old friend. The sights, the sounds, and the smells, all of these elements melt into an intoxicating, sensual experience. Mona Lisa, it would take, I know, a Michelangelo, and he would need the glow of dawn that lights the sky above. To try and paint a portrait of my love. But at times the weather in Florence is as unexpected and temperamental as a beautiful woman. In solitude. Far from your tranquil altitude Saddest in the world and 
live on a dream that never could be, would never be. Dreamer awake, hey, wake up and see. The next day I make my way to our destination, Chetona. But first I make a stop in Massa, where I visit some dear friends and have a chance to sample some of my favorite wines in the world. Francesco Bertozzoli is up with the sun every morning to tend to the passion of his life, his beautiful hillside vineyard. And the coolest way to get up there in more ways than one is this Macchina Infernale, this infernal machine. Francesco is neither an aristocrat nor the son of landed gentry. He's simply a man with a profound love for the earth beneath his feet and a belief in what this fertile soil can produce. Almost everything on the mountain is edible. The herbs and spices are found in the soups concocted by Andreina. The vegetables are in the salads and in the marvelous main dishes. And the olives are pressed into a delectable olive oil for our salads and for our pasta. The fruits are in the yummy desserts. What more could you want? It's heaven. See, si. siamo in cielo. See, si. in si. paradiso. <laughs> si. Francesco produces a limited edition of wines under the Bertozzoli name. Moneta, a delightful aromatic white wine. Cibeo, a lusty red. Eh. Mm. With hints of Mediterranean herbs and wild red fruits. Come frutti di bosco. Molto fruttato, sì. And his masterpiece. Fucchia, a dignified white wine that I usually choose when I'm in the restaurant for lunch. Beviamo. Ecco perché viene fuori un buon prodotto, con tanto si. amore. Tanto, tanto, and lots of love in it too. He and his wife Andreina harvest almost everything from this mountain. And the bounty can be found in the dishes she cooks in their exquisite little restaurant, Il Trillo. Every dish and every course is created by Andreina with seasonal tradition di stagione and she only uses the finest and freshest ingredients. The art, see the observance to detail and taste the freshness in every bite. Mmm! Delizioso come sempre. Il trillo is a reflection of the deep emotional commitment of Francesco and Andreina to the small corner of Tuscany. Now I'm going to take you to another corner of this region, a place I've promised to show you. A place full of enchantment and mystery and green verdant hills, just like a, like a Da Vinci painting made for the movies. In the southernmost part of Tuscany, Overlooking the beautiful landscapes of Umbria and Lazio, Cetona has stood for over a thousand years and is one of the most picturesque hamlets in the entire region. The La Rocca Fortress, known as the Cetona Castle, was built in the year 900 AD and has been an architectural jewel for generations. There is a steep colonnade-like entranceway to the villa, leading to a stunning amphitheater at the top. On entering the gates of La Rocca, we're transported to a place beyond time. It's one of my favorite spots on earth. It's amazing. Ciao Massimo! Ciao carissimo. <laughs> Benvenuto alla Rocca di Cetona. Grazie. Hey, Rufus, ciao. Come stai? Tutto bene. E la famiglia? La famiglia perfetta. Sì. Il cane nel mezzo. <laughs> sì. Eh. Though the foundation and the main tower are over a thousand years old, La Rocca has been carefully restored, maintaining its noble appearance and resulting in a timeless grace and style. So 
close your eyes For that's a lovely way to be Aware of things your heart alone was meant to see The fundamental loneliness goes Whenever two can dream a dream together So don't deny Don't try to fight the rising sea Don't fight the moon, the stars above And don't fight me The fundamental loneliness goes When two can dream a dream together Tuscany is filled with the most incredible villas. But this one is definitely one of the most beautiful. The evenings at La Rocca are spent with friends, music, delicious food, and spirited conversation. There's an air of gracious tranquility here. And the beauty of it is, you're at home. cold maybe just afraid to be broken again so let someone start believing in you let him hold out his hand let him touch you and watch what happens when someone can see look in your eyes and see into your heart let him touch you and watch what happens on a clear day rise and look around you and you'll see who you are On a clear day How it will astound The perfect start to a day here in Chitona is a good Italian breakfast in the garden and a strong espresso to fortify you for the day ahead. The fundamental loneliness goes Whenever two can dream a dream on the way down from La Rocca, as one is about to leave the grounds and enter into the charming and picturesque labyrinth of winding, twisting streets of Chitona village, a fantastical room appears that seems to grow out organically from the mountain itself. Intriguing. On a clear day, rise and look around you. This church, known locally as La Collegiata, has a facade of travertine marble, the Rosetta window and the typical doors, and is quite simply bellissima. The wave is on its way to breathe. Just take that This ancient community is a well-guarded secret to privacy-seeking celebrities and since the 1960s has become a haunt of VIPs who have bought and renovated properties here. Together. Chetona has only about 3,000 inhabitants, and even if very selective and elite tourism has brought a degree of fame to the village, the community has retained its authentic character and rural identity. 
an atmosphere which nowadays is more and more difficult to find. You can wander through streets and alleys discovering hidden corners and breathtaking views. Savor the fresh air blowing in from the hills around us. Smells of Tuscan herbs and a bit of magic. The fundamental loneliness goes when two can dream a dream together. It's so good to sit here after that walk. By the way, the other significant hill here in Cittona belongs to the Palazzo and Parco Terossi, which is owned by the famous designer Valentino. From here we have a 360 degree bird's eye view of the beautiful countryside surrounding Cittona. Sad is to live in solitude Far from your tranquil So another day draws to a close with friends by the pool and then enjoying a walk through the gardens in the magical atmosphere as the sun sets over Chetona. would never be dreamer awake Hey, wake up and see your beauty is an aeroplane. From here the world seems so far away, and yet in the palm of your hand. The magic of Chitona and the splendid beauty of La Roca combine to transport us to a place in the heart, a time and space stand still, rendering the greatest luxury that one can feel happiness. Hope you've enjoyed our journey. Until the next time, farewell. Someone he would never leave So passion